What's up guys, my name is Tony, and today I'm going to give you a quick and painless guide on installing and configuring FreeBSD. FreeBSD is a Unix-like operating system descended from BSD, which was the Berkeley software distribution. It's not Linux, it's a completely different operating system with its own kernel, user land, and philosophy. What makes FreeBSD interesting is ZFS is built into the base system, not a third-party module. Jails, which is an OS-level virtualization that's been around since 2000. A coherent base system with the kernel plus user land maintained together. Legendary documentation, and we're talking about the FreeBSD handbook, which is not quite as good as the NixOS documentation, but it, it competes with it. It's pretty good. Ports collections, which allows you to build source with custom options. And of course, the BSD license, which is not as good as the GPL, in my opinion, but it's very permissive. So if that's something you're into, yeah, take it or leave it. Let's jump right into the installation. All right, so let's go ahead and head on over to freebsd.org. And we'll go ahead and just click download FreeBSD. We're going to use the FreeBSD 15.0 release today. I am on AMD 64 Tech and we're gonna go with this dvd1.iso. It is four gigabytes, but it includes all the packages we need. So let's just grab it. Not quite as big as the Omarchi ISO, but it, it's okay for now. All right, so I've loaded up the FreeBSD image here and I'm going to simply hit enter at this menu to enter the boot installer. So this is a text-based installer and it's very straightforward. So we'll go through this and then we will focus on how to configure BSD to be a daily drivable operating system. So let's go ahead and hit enter on install here. And for me, I'm gonna just continue with the default, but if your keyboard is Estonian or Belarusian or what have you, you're gonna want to specify that here. For my host name, I will be doing free BSD BTW because I'm using FreeBSD, by the way. And we'll go ahead and use distribution sets here. And we'll go with the defaults today. And we are gonna use the auto ZFS partitioning. If you do want to manually partition your disks here, that's totally up to you and you can do that. You can also use the shell and use Gparted. But for me and for this tutorial today, we're going with the auto ZFS here. And as you can see here, it looks like it's gonna create a two gigabyte swap and the partition scheme is GPT. That's correct. Looks like everything's good here. And we're gonna go ahead and run with this here. So we're gonna choose Stripe here for single disk. If you have two, go ahead and use mirror. So I've got Stripe here. There's my QEMU hard disk. I'll hit space to select that. And there we go. So we've confirmed that ADA zero is the name of our disk we're gonna wipe. So let's get that wiped here. All right, for the password, we're gonna create a strong and secure password there. Let's hit okay there. And we're gonna automatically select our network config here. So just hit enter here. We're gonna acquire that DHCP lease. And again, this is a really simple installation. It's basically a next simulator. All right, so for the time zone, I'm gonna go ahead and select America here. And I'm gonna hit United States of America. I'm gonna head down to Pacific here. And there we go. PST looks good for me. For the date, Let's go ahead and set that date, set that time, perfect. Now, here's some system config stuff. You can enable or disable stuff. We have SSHD and dump dev, that's enough for me. So we'll go ahead and hit okay on this and we'll go ahead and opt out of system security hardening options for now, but we could do a deep dive on this in a future video. So we're gonna go ahead and add some user accounts now. I'm gonna add Tony. Full name is Tony, last name is BTW. The UID, we're gonna use the default for that. Login group will be Tony. We're gonna add Tony to the wheel group so we can do commands as root later. Login class is the default. Shell, default SH. Default home directory. Default home directory permissions. No ZFS encryption. Use password-based authentication. We're gonna do no for that. We'll do no for the lock out of the account after creation and everything looks good. So go ahead and hit yes. And we're not gonna add another user, so hit no on that. All right, so we can kind of overview what we did here, but you know, this is basically a next simulator. So let's move on to the good stuff here. Let's go ahead and finish this. And now that the installation is finished, we can just hit no here so we can reboot. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so we've rebooted here and you'll see this menu again, which is normal. So just hit enter to boot multi-user. All right, so let's just log in as root for right now. 
and we'll go ahead and clear all this. All right, so we have logged into this root account and we're actually gonna set up a password for the Tony account here. So we'll do password Tony. Let's make that secure. And for right now, we need to install some packages and the package manager for BSD, it's very hard to remember. It's called PKG. I have no idea what that stands for or what that means, but PKG. So there you go. So we'll do a PKG and there's a couple things you can do with PKG. You can type PKG search. So for example, if we wanted to search Firefox, looks like we're gonna bootstrap PKG into our system here. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. We see Firefox is a package that's available through PKG, so. All right, to install the packages we're gonna need today, we're gonna run PKG install. We're gonna grab xorg as our display server for today. We'll get x in it so we can start x here. We'll grab rust so we can install our window manager for today. And PKG comp is a dependency for that window manager. We'll get x wallpaper so we can set the wallpaper. Go ahead and grab NeoVim as a text editor. And for our terminal, let's grab Alacrity. And for the web browser, let's go ahead and grab Firefox here. and. We are gonna need Git, so let's grab that. And we do want to embrace the BSD mindset, so let's grab do as instead of sudo, so we can run commands as root. I think that should cover it for right now. We may need more packages later, but for now, let's let that rip. All right, 775 megabytes. I'm gonna let that one run, and I will see you shortly. All right, looks like that's good to go. So, We'll go ahead and grab some nerd fonts here. So I'm gonna do PKG install nerd fonts. We're gonna grab all of them because I do like to swap it up here. But if you want just one specific nerd font and not take up a gigabyte of space on your hard drive, just select the one you want. You can just install that specific one. So I'll let this run and I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, that's good to go. And clear that. So we do need to configure our do as comp file. So let's do nvim user local etsy do as dot comp. And we just need one line in here. Let's do permit persist colon wheel. And that will allow us to run do as commands in any user in the wheel group and it'll persist the password. So we save and quit that file. We can clear this. All right, so we are good to install the window manager for today. And of course that window manager will be OXWM. So let's go ahead and switch into Tony here. And we'll do git clone HTTPS github.com slash Tony Banters slash OXWM. So we'll clone that. All right, looks like we're good to go. So let's CD into OXWM. And to install that here, let's go ahead and run cargo install dash dash path dot to install that right in this directory. And there we go, 78 dependencies. All right, so we do have the binary file. We need to copy that into our user bin location. So let's do do as cp target release oxwm and we'll put that into user bin oxwm whoa just leaked my password all right so we've essentially installed pretty much everything we need and i guess before we jump right into this let's go ahead and run oxwm dash dash version to confirm we have the binary which we do so that's good and i will do fc list pipe grep iosevka nerd and it looks like we do have the iOS Sevka nerd font. So I think we're good to put that into our config. We'll do OXWM dash dash init to create the Lua file. And we'll go ahead and do nvim.config OXWM config.lua. Love this color scheme, by the way, super default. All right, so let's go down to font and we will immediately comment this out and uncomment this to get the nerd fonts. And let's change this to IO Sevka nerd font propo. Let's change the size to 12. And that looks good for now. A couple more things we need that I've realized. Let's do do as PKG install name and X clip. So we'll grab those and all right. Go back to our home directory do mvim.xinitrc here. Couple things I'm gonna do off the gate. First thing I wanna run is xsetr rate 
235 because that'll set the keyboard repeat rate to what I want. And then we don't actually have the wallpaper right now. So I will just put this in as a comment, but we're going to do X wallpaper dash dash zoom and we'll do walls wall one dot PNG. But that doesn't exist yet. So let's comment that out and we'll do exec OXWM. And that's all we need for now. We're not using PyCom or anything. This is just a super minimal install. So we can save and close that file. Let's run LSLA to see what that looks like. All right. So we are almost ready to go. I am on a VM, so I'm gonna create a quick xorg.com file to point my VM to my graphics driver. So I'll do do as nvim user local etsy x11 xorg.conf. And this is gonna be a quick section device type sh identifier. It's gonna be card zero for me. It's gonna be different for you. So check that out. And I'm gonna use the SCFB driver. Go ahead and end that section. Save that, quit that, clear that. Looks like we're good to go. So I'm gonna do a quick reboot and then we'll jump right into our desktop environment here. All right, so we went ahead and rebooted here. So let's go ahead and just hit enter again to boot multi-user and kind of see what happens here. So if everything is correct, we should be able to just start X and be good to go. But you know, there's always the opportunity or the chance that something did not go correct. Let's kind of see what happens here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and log in here to Tony. And let's just try hitting start X, see what happened. Oh, there we go. Immediately off the gate, we see our beautiful OXWM set up here. And I went ahead and installed that wallpaper. I just grabbed it off of Wallhaven. And so that is a very simple config here. So yeah, we're already on BSD and it's looking pretty good here. All right, so let's set a couple things up here. It looks like we've got our terminal here, Alacrity. We do want to grab our Alacrity config. So I'm gonna do git clone. Tony Banter's Alacrity. And let's just put that in config, Alacrity. There we go. So now if we open that, we see a little bit different. Let's change the font size on that. Let's do Iosevka and then the font, let's do 20. And we do want a little bit of a better prompt, so Let's grab that. And we're not using bash. We are just using sh. So for that, we need to jump into our shrc file. And we've got a couple aliases here. Let's add one more for later. But we also have this prompt here that we want to change. So let's do that. And I've went ahead and pasted my prompt into this VM here. So let's go ahead and run that one here. And to source this .shrc file, we're just going to run dot dot shrc and there we go we've got our prompt all right so we can go ahead and start checking this out here yeah everything's looking good we've got access to all of the layouts so that's good so let's go ahead and install d menu do as pkg install d menu there we go. So we can clear that and we can run d menu now. There we go. Okay. So if we run d menu, we should be able to open Firefox. And there we go. There's that beautiful corporate art that we love to see. The bloat continues. So let's immediately just search for Arkenfox user.js and we'll grab that user.js file. We'll download it. So we've downloaded that. And then we're gonna go ahead and do about support to get that file path here. Looks like it's right here. So we can just copy that and yeah. So we'll do a move downloads user.js. We'll put it in here and we'll put it as user.js in this file. Hopefully we can quit this, run Firefox again. There we go, sure. So we've got at least a case hardened Firefox, but it's still bright, so let's fix that. Settings, immediately hit dark mode. Manage themes, Tokyo Night, of course. Tokyo Night, of course. Let's get that one from Malav. There it is. Continue, add. And one more thing to make this usable is uBlock Origin. So we'll grab that and go ahead and add that, hit OK, etc. So we're good on that. So now we have Firefox. And there we go. So we've got Terminal, we've got Firefox. Looking pretty clean here. And really at this point, the world is your oyster. I mean, BSD is pretty interesting. 
We run top here, kind of see what we're dealing with. Looks like pretty minimal. But yeah, there we go. We've got BSD, we've got Duaz, we've got Firefox, we've got Alacrity, we've got a terminal here. So looking good. So of course there is a lot more that we could possibly go over. This is just scratching the surface. But again, the world really is your oyster here. I mean, you're on BSD, you have access to POSIX compliant shell commands. You've got whatever you really want. You could install Bash, you could do whatever you want really. So for me, for this situation, I will end the video here and we will do a deeper dive on BSD and the ecosystem around it in a future video. But yeah, thanks so much for checking out the video. And if you have any questions or would like to see any free and open source content or or Linux content or BSD content in the future, just drop a comment and I will put it in the pipeline. But that being said, I would not be able to end the video without an obligatory NeoFetch.